In this video, I actually want to share seven things that I've learned from dying and coming back. As some of you might know from just watching some other videos here on my YouTube channel, uh, on the 19th of February 2021, I survived a sudden cardiac arrest. It was just by pure luck that, you know, I was sleeping uh, next to someone because uh, I just started dating my girlfriend uh, and I was at her place. And she noticed that something was not going <laughs> right. Uh, and when I stopped breathing, then things, well, definitely turned uh, serious. It's because of her her quick thinking and the paramedics who just appeared in a couple of minutes that I am sitting here today. Uh, but I did die for a couple of minutes. I've been dealing with a heart disease, a very rare heart disease. Uh, I will put it down here in the video, uh, how it's called. Uh, but I've been dealing ever since they diagnosed that in me when I was like six years old. Uh, I've been dealing with a serious heart disease my whole life. Facing death in a way, uh, or just having a lot of thoughts about it. It's not something new in my life, but I did thought a lot more about it now. It's actually in this video that I want to share seven of those realizations with you. Note that these are my personal realizations, right? The chances that you will not agree with all of them is likely, but at least hopefully hearing about them might help you find your own truths and your own realizations. So because of my uh, the, cardi the sudden cardiac arrest, I live today with an ICD in me. I'm glad that I have it as it could save me, you know. If I ever would have another sudden cardiac arrest, this will give me a shock. But just knowing that I had a sudden cardiac arrest and that it can happen again, it is a scary thought, you know, because uh, it could happen at any moment. And every just time that I come back from the hospital from a, a, not a regular check-in to see how everything is going and to read the ICD where they can then see how my heart is doing. Every time I get reminded again of the serious heart disease that I have, I notice that it actually almost made me not leave my house in a way or that I am hesitant or was more hesitant to, to, to go on a vacation if there wasn't like a hospital like a few meters next doors. And it's not like I'm such a anxious person but I did notice those thoughts coming more and more. Whereas before, I lived a very adventurous life. You know, I went, I climbed mountains. I went weeks on end just uh, hiking alone in the wilds. Uh, I did so many adventurous things. Because this never happened, I never worried that this could ever happen. Once I started noticing these thoughts happening in me, this realization came to me. If you constantly fear dying, you cannot enjoy living. And if you still want to enjoy living, you got to stop worrying that you're going to die at some point. It's a reality for everyone in the end. I'm not saying that you can't be more aware because what happens, but just don't live in fear of what could happen. Else you cannot live, you know, life. You cannot enjoy it anymore because uh, you're constantly stressing out. You know, dying at the age of 28 would have naturally been sad for the people uh, around me, right? The people who are close to me and who care about me. However, and I don't mean to say this in sort of a, a dark way or something or like in a depressed way or anything. I don't mean that. If I would have died, you know, I, I was happy. I was not suffering. Uh, and it happened without me being aware of it. You know, out of all the ways that someone could die, honestly, it would have been simply and purely one of the best ways to die. As we tend to get older, the chances that we will suffer, either mentally or physically, increase more and more. Uh, old people often wish that to take them away from, you know, the suffering they're experiencing. Of course, I'm grateful that I have gotten this second chance, but while a lot of people have told me that, like, oh, you must be so grateful that you got this second chance, people don't often realize that there is a, 
there's another side to everything. You know, that's always the case. And sure, I get this chance, you know, this second chance, and I'm grateful for that. But a certain amount of suffering has been instilled in my life, you know. I do experience still a lot of fatigue and dizziness and blurred vision. Uh, Some days are better than others. And also just living with this ICD has put certain restrictions on my life. Uh, I also don't know the future, how it will be, uh, but there's certainly still a lot of, or a few surgeries that will happen. I hope it will, you know, become better and better throughout the years. But right now there are still quite a lot of ups and downs that people don't just know when they just see me. I'm truly not trying to complain or be ungrateful by sharing this. It just truly has made me realize that if you can live a life You know, if you can get old and suffering is not a major part of your life and you died, then you truly have actually lived a good life. Constantly suffering is the worst thing about living. No one likes to suffer. So this might be something that, well, speaks for itself. And most people, when you say it to them, they will be like, yeah, I I, I know. But it's only when it really happens, either by, you know, losing someone close to you in your environment or when it happened to yourself, that you truly see that it's true, that life can end at any moment. Because the day of my sudden cardiac arrest, it was like a super normal day. I went to the co-working place where I work at and it was on a Friday and every Friday we do like uh, an after work where we have some drinks together. So, you know, I spent some time with friends and chatted and then I went to my girlfriend's place and uh, we had some foods, went to bed and then days later, I woke up in the hospital unaware of what happened. Life can instantly change for everyone. And I think for some, this can be a scary thing to hear. There's two sides, you know, you can use this to be scared away from, oh yeah, you know, to live in fear. Or you could use it to just live more, you know, in touch with yourself and to do more what you like doing and I had to, to find a job that you like doing actually and to spend time with people that you love to just do those things more because why wouldn't you because it's gonna end at some point for everyone and you don't know you truly do not know and I had this reminder now multiple times in my life uh, by dying myself but also when I was four years old and by losing my dad so I had this realization that people can truly, even the people closest to you, can truly die at any moment. It will happen to you as well. If you're suffering right now, or if you're going through a very hard time, read the book Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Franklin. Uh, He's a psychiatrist and a Holocaust survivor. It's just, um, it's a phenomenal book. It's just incredible. Especially if you're suffering, (laughs) then it's just a perfect book to read. There's a chance that you've seen maybe a quote here and there on the internet from Viktor Franklin. He's quite known. I actually want to share a quote from him. And that's the following one. In some ways, suffering ceases to be suffering at the moment it finds a meaning, such as the meaning of a sacrifice. That's something that I already realized like years ago, but this book just confirmed it so much more how important it is to find meaning in life, to find meaning in the suffering that you've gone through or that you're going through right now. In the past, losing my dad, uh, walking around when I was 12 to 18 for six years with suicidal thoughts, that has led me to create the IPS project, uh, an educational platform on life, where I provide, you know, uh, education on topics like mental health, relationships, the mind, the body and brain, topics that we just learn almost nothing about growing up, you know, nor from our parents or from school. It's just like we have to figure it out ourselves, even though there's such important topics to learn more about. That's why I founded that project. 
uh, the IPS project to just provide through podcast interviews, uh, through articles, through courses, through events, education on these topics because of you know the suffering that I endured in through those years and doing something with that suffering there's so much meaning that I feel whenever I work on the IPS project because there's a deeper deeper reason why I started it you know surviving this sudden cardiac arrest I actually started working on a new project called the uh, Heart Warrior Project and I'm actually wearing one of the t-shirts that we sell on there. It's been created because of the suffering, you know, that, that I endured from living with a heart disease for more than plus 20 years and from surviving a sudden cardiac arrest now and just a roller coaster that's been. I found, you know, a meaning out of that, what happened to me by doing something with it, by creating the Heart Warrior Project, a website where I just wanna talk with other survivors, uh, other sudden cardiac arrest survivors, any tips, you know, that they can give or any you know difficulties that they faced and how they kind of got out of it if you're a sudden cardiac arrest survivor uh or if you know someone then uh, check it out the website uh, i will put it in the description it's called the heart warrior project uh, it's still quite new so i'm still putting a lot of content on it and i can only recommend if you're suffering or if you have gone through something very terrible do something with it that could help other people that's a lot of times where we find the most greatest meaning in by helping other people and definitely read the book man's search for meaning it's just again it's incredible um i will also link the book in the description of this video all we do when we are born until the day that we die is wait you know, we just, we're, we're kind of all waiting for death to come around and wrap its arms around us. The real question to ask yourself in life is just how do you want to wait? How do you want to wait? And there's two ways to wait, and that's either unconsciously or consciously. And unconsciously is just, just living on autopilot, just uh, never questioning anything. And uh, yeah, just living every day like it's the same day. Living consciously is more trying to do things that you enjoy doing and pondering and questioning these exact questions. And of course, in those two states, there's just many ways to live. Uh, you, you could just live to pay your bills. Uh, you can live by just being pessimistic and angry all the time. You can live uh, just by trying to please people all the time. Or you can live by trying to just have fun in life, by trying to do things that you love doing, by being there for other people and without sounding corny, just by giving love to others and to the world. Be very sure that you have asked yourself how you're waiting and if you're happy, how you're currently waiting. Because at some point in life, when that will come around, to wrap its arms around you, there's a very high chance that the following question will go through your minds. Has the waiting been worth it? Now that you still have the chance to ask yourself and to truly just look at life and how you're waiting, ask yourself if you're happy how you're waiting. I've asked myself that question a lot of times and it's an important question to ask because uh, at some point there's no yeah, chance anymore to ask that question. That will come and wrap its arms around you and then it's too late. So uh, be sure that you're aware of how you're waiting. This notion of trying to live life without regrets, that's been instilled in me way before my cardiac arrest, you know. It was instilled in me by my dad, like I already said in this video. I traveled for years and years and years when I was 18 around the world. And I'm so happy and glad that I did that. Uh, because I know that when I was sometimes coming to visit, you know, for a week or two or just for a month here in Belgium, uh, my family, I know some friends that I run into here in my hometown where I am at, uh, who were sort of... Uh, questioning what I was doing like why are you not just you know getting a normal job or why are you not going to university right now 
uh, or who were just like frowning upon me and who felt that that was not the correct way to live. The same with my job that I do, like having founded the IPS project and I know a lot of people also just frowned upon that in a way because they mainly just didn't understand uh, it, I would say. But I can tell you after having died myself now that I was right. I was so right for doing this, for traveling around when I was young and when I was still, you know, when I was still in good health and I still had a lot of energy because I already knew at that age, you will not have forever to do all this. You will not have forever to explore the world. There is an end date. So I already felt this urgency to just try to go and do the things that I love doing. I said this to many people and I so mean this that if I would have died at the age of 28, I would have died without with zero regrets. I feel an enormous amount of just peace and fulfillment knowing that I would have died with zero regrets. The end of each path that we're taking, it's the same. It's death. <laughs> That's the end of each path. But the path towards that, towards the end, actually more than you know, you can choose which path to walk on. Most people are sort of walking on the same path because that's sort of the laid out path and direction. You could say the path of what society sort of laid out for us. And that's fine if you're completely happy with that. But if you're not, then you don't have to stay on that path. There are so many other paths that are more fitting for you then. And I did that. I took that chance to just go off track and discover my own path. And I'm so happy now that I did that because it felt right. I felt I was on the exact path that was meant for me. This last one, uh, this last insight and realization, it kind of goes to my, uh, to my girlfriend, to my sister and to my mom. And without hopefully sounding too narcissistic uh, to me. You know, it's been a real, <laughs> roller coaster dealing for more than plus 20 years with this chronic heart disease that I have and it's definitely been a roller coaster surviving this sudden cardiac arrest about a year and a half ago. It's very easy to stay strong or to show that you're a courageous person when you're feeling good. Uh, but those are not the moments to truly see that someone has those traits actually. It is only when times are actually hard that you truly see that someone has those traits, traits of strength and courage. And I am so grateful for my sister for just always giving her unconditional time and energy to just listen to me. She even at times pushes aside her own problems and just only wants to focus on listening to me and being there for me. That's courage and strength in her that I so deeply appreciate. And I'm so grateful for my girlfriend uh, for just constantly supporting me through this all, you know, and constantly being there for me, even though this is emotionally taxing on her too. And I am so grateful for my mom for just uh, staying so optimistic and positive even though, I mean, it must be so hard for her to see her own son struggling with his own health. And lastly, I'm just grateful for, for me, for just not giving up on me and for constantly trying, you know, to go on, even though I've been dealing with this fatigue and dizziness now for the last year and a half, uh, almost every day and for just always trying to better my health in any way that I can. Again, true strength and courage, those traits are only but truly shown in people when times are hard, uh, not when times are easy. Surviving this sudden cardiac arrest has ever so more shown me that truth. And these were some of actually the many more that I have, but uh, some insights and realization that I thought were worth sharing with you all. I hope you got something out of it. Let me know uh, if you have any thoughts about any of them that I shared. Uh, you can do so in the comments. 
section down below, leave me a comment. Uh, or if you would add anything to this list, you know, anything that you realized, any insights and realization that you had from just, uh, I don't know, whichever experience that you had uh, with that. If you like this video, then a thumbs up is uh, always appreciated. And if you would like to see more content like this, then be sure to hit the subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I am uh, gonna go and uh, eat something because I am hungry. Hope to see you again in another video. Ciao.